I'm Chris Valera, Associate, Associate Director IT for TLT at Rutgers, and I'm joined by... Warren Nevins, Director of ITAX at Rutgers, um, Information Technology Community Studies, part of DOCS. Uh, I'm Rick Anderson. I'm Director of Virtual Worlds, which is uh, Game Research and Immersive Design. So we're actually three IT directors, um, part of DOCS, but <laughs> three separate IT directors, and together, we basically, um, over the last six months, developed the game that you guys saw outside. Um, Rick had a nice introduction of, uh, about the game this morning. He basically uh, gave you guys an update about where we were during lunchtime. Um, most importantly, if you scroll, if you're actually playing in the game, who, like, who's playing the game? Yeah, put your hand. Who's playing right? the game? So if you scroll down to the bottom, you may have seen the secret objective. This is actually the secret objective. So you could get 30 points just by sitting here today. So that's why you should have signed up. But yeah. That's, <laughs> now you do have to do one thing. Yeah. So you have to do one thing. You actually have to come up and take a picture with the Chuck Norris badge. <laughs> as it says, as it's stated, no, we're all going to come up together and actually take oh. a selfie. So you guys, all of us so together. Nathan B has to come oh. up and, yeah, you guys have to come up. And, so only the people playing the game need to come up. You can come up too just to have just some Just be in the so. selfie. Just be yeah. evident you were in the room yeah. with us. And that yeah. way it'll be moderated and you'll get your 30 points. Yeah. Yeah, so come on up. Oh, you yeah. for your 30 points later. Okay. <laughs> I, could, I could help take the photo. Yeah, 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 yeah. there you go. Yeah. Right, yeah. I'll get like, back well, here. Yeah, you, you gotta, I'm like, I'm like yeah. getting down there. I'll never get back. Oh. Is it like a panel? I'll just be blinded by <laughs> the projector. <laughs> 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 if you get tight. Yeah. One step to the right. Well, there's there a lot go. of you guys, so yeah. 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 you gotta go to the right. Oh, you guys can come on in over this way. There we go. Yeah, you have to watch your projector here. It's like kind of bright. Kind of like <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's <laughs> effective. <laughs> but you need Chuck, though. Yeah, but we need Chuck. Oh, no, Chuck. We need Chuck. We need Chuck. All right. OK, so we'll pose. And then Chuck will show, okay. or something will happen. Wait, you need Chuck. Oh, so you have to blind us for a moment. Oh, okay. Just a moment. Ah! Oh. OK, we have to be as strong. Can come over here? Yeah, here we go. Two, three, that phone. Oh. Click, click. Uh -oh. There's still a lot of people in the audience. I'm people take you photo. There you go. All right, get the points. Cool. cool. Hour. Oh. All right. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. That was actually the session. So you can. No, I'm just kidding. We're done. We're going home now. <laughs> <laughs> You're going home. So what we were hoping to do today is basically just go through um, milestones through our discovery. So I mentioned there were three base, three essential um, IT teams that were contributing to this to this um, mobile app game. The most important thing for us was whatever we actually developed that we had to get it inside of the Android and iOS store. So yeah. we've gone through evolution, a uh, basic evolution of um, online gaming or paper gaming throughout, I don't know, mm -hmm. the last five conferences. Yeah. This was very, very important to us because it looks, it's pretty cool to put on your portfolio, right? We actually had something in iOS. What's crazy though, is that we did this in six months. I would not recommend you do anything for iOS for Android <laughs> in six months because that is absolutely crazy. Um, Warren's actually gonna go going to go through the infrastructure and the types of hiring that we've done, um, who we we're looking for, the type of personnel we're looking for, experience. Six months is wild in getting mm -hmm. something of this magnitude in the iOS store. I will admit, it came down to the very last hour, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, well, I'll tell a tale about that, of when I get up about like, what happened on Saturday. <laughs> Around 4 p.m. last night is when this app got approved by the iOS store at Apple. Wow. Right? So Apple actually has to approve it. They yeah. basically look at your source code, they look at the playability, they make sure the description is actually valid. They were doing that type of assessment and checks and balances until 4 p.m. yesterday. So we really didn't have a backup plan. We had like a plan A through J, mm -hmm. and J was abandoned ship. So um, <laughs> this is where we were. So this, is really, really, this was really, really important for us. The collaborate mosaic. So Antonius, in the beginning of his presentation, basically said, we sat around a room and thought about what the theme of the conference should be this year. So this mosaic, um, I actually used it, I used a, a free application on my MacBook called Android Mosaic. You guys could actually do this yourselves. I took pictures from the last two conferences and just created the mosaic. The first thing I did was basically take, I created a JPEG image of the word collaborate in Photoshop. That sets the underlying image and then you just kind of import all of these photos and 
on top of the application, it does everything for you. So I didn't do anything special. I just kind of picked pictures like you would do in your normal, um, like your Picasso or your Google photo album. All of those pictures got imported into the, into the Andrew Mosaic application and it was completed. The inspiration though, that I was actually just going through mosaics and figuring out exactly what we could do for our conference. Live event mosaics are pretty popular around bigger conferences that I've attended. So I, I came across this application. You guys could actually go on your, on your phones right now. It's picturemosaic.com. This is a live mosaic right now in real time. If you tweet this hashtag RISMDemo, whatever picture you take, it'll actually contribute to this live mosaic. So if you have a laptop in front of you, if you have your smartphone, you could use this. You could actually use this inside of your classroom just to kind of um, exemplify things that could be done in real time, things that could be done with Twitter. But again, the live mosaic was something we really wanted to do and obviously incorporate into the game that we were developing. If you had attended some of our conferences in the past, you may have seen things that we've done with Guidebook. Guidebook is basically an app where you could create a conference, um, a conference scheduling app or a module. Guidebook is kind of expensive, but we wanted to try it out to have more of a mobile presence at our conference. So we bought Guidebook, sucked in the, uh, the conference schedule, and you know, we basically had a Guidebook app. We, the usage was very low. Um, I'll admit the usage today was a bit low, but um, those are things that we're basically going to explore and, and learn about. But Guidebook was a, you know, it was a interesting tool, and there were things that we learned about it. Tweetwall was something we'd done about two years ago. If you saw the Twitter feed on the bottom of our game, that's basically what Tweetwall does. All, a lot of you attended conferences and have seen Tweetwalls. Basically, if you do hashtag whatever conference, hashtag Educause, hashtag site, hashtag whatever, Tweetwall basically sucks in all the tweets in that conversation and puts it up on the big screen. So we've actually done that on the bottom. And this last slide, or this last square here, is basically the game, the first online game that we did about three years ago. Mm -hmm. So three years ago, if you attended um, the East Brunswick Hilton conference, Semester in a Day was, again, a game that Rick's team developed. Basically what we did, we took these three elements together, married them, and created, oops, sorry. I'll scroll through. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And created our. There it is. Go back. I got it. slides in the I got it. I have to go forward again. So we took these three elements, married them together, and created the app that you guys were using today. Yeah. All right. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Rick to. Okay. So time. all right. Let's see where. Let's see where we go. Oh yeah. So so my team is game research immersive design, and Kenny from my team is here, and there's. Uh, a lot of reliance upon him because he's been building with us the, uh, the conference games. And so we had two things I wanted to talk about a little bit, which is our conference games of the past and then the idea of moving to mobile technology. So actually the semester in a day event was 2015. So we've been doing this for a while, and the idea was, well, how do we create different kinds of engagement? So what we ended up doing is a hybrid game where you could like, get the, the workshop had a code, and you could collect the code from the workshop. And as everybody collected, it unlocked the semester in a day. So it was an overarching story that got unlocked as people played. So it was kind of a person, it was sort of a combination game. It was like paper and online combination. But you could check into your workshops, go to the booths, earn points and badges. And again, we, we did that weird overarching storyline and then prizes. So we've kept that particular theme across the years. The next year, we actually did the Rutgers 250 Time Vault game. So it was actually pretty much on the same mechanic, but we uh, said, hey, take a journey through and explore the storied history of Rutgers University. And as the day went, you picked up pieces of info about the university. You also, we went to RU Online Con, Rutgers, EDU game. So it went more away from our sort of paper style to more interactive web style. I think we had Drupal or something. Uh, yeah, so it was a lot of interacting with like technology that, that you have on hand. And uh, anyway, we basically told the story of Rutgers and many of its elements throughout its history. So that, that brought in the spirit of the 250 game. And then I have to 
say 2017 was the dreaded AR game. Uh, it was uh, sort of, it was taking all that and adding augmented reality to it and I failed back to the paper game mainly because of things like getting into the Android store, which was like sort of that experience that's like scars you, but you know it has to be the most important thing. Get in the store. So anyway, um, we were doing like looking for constellation codes and all kinds of neat little AR elements. These are things that may make a comeback now that we have our current game. So the current game mirrored kind of the, the element of just using the app, collecting the photos, uh, getting the achievements, and then the idea was not just sort of put it all in the app, but let's show everybody what's going on, right? Because that was one of the elements of the storytelling games of Unlock a Semester in a Day would be you'd find out, oh, this happened or that happened, and now I've kind of like got the experience of a student. In this case, we were saying, okay, let's collaborate and build this mosaic. And the mosaic was more of a customization, um, which will go into to Warren's team, but the each of those contributions end up building the big picture. And then the next element was the sort of, let's make sure, let's, let's put a leaderboard out there so people could see where they are, what their shot at getting all the points would be. So we basically brought in both the, the physical space with the elements and the signage, and then we brought in the, uh, uh, the app pieces to collect the photos and, and try to create like an easy to go experience. Um, but <laughs> we actually had to do design. This is, this is more like what my group does. And this is what this is Kenny's work, is we talk with everybody. We say, what have we been doing for a while? What have, what's worked? What's not worked? What do we want to do this year? And I have to say, uh, that conversation all got distilled down into storyboards. So the storyboard is, some, is a step that I basically I live by and I tell everyone to do because we can block out what the game should be without having to build the whole game. So in this case, the first slide I got here is collaborate, scan this to contribute to the collab wall and a chance to win prizes. So in fact, it's not quite the, the, what we came out with. We have contribute to the wall, uh, scan the code, scanning became taking pictures. Um, we have a sort of, you could have had a slide at the end of the workshop, random locations, and then you could scan other players. Again, it turned into, like, it was much easier to collect people by taking their photo. And then we were like, okay, well, what about vendor and sponsor interactions? So we want to encourage that too, because all of these people are showing up, they're sponsoring, and that engagement is actually important to keep the engagement for, for them to come back another time or to up their ante. So we created the sort of, in this case, it was take a picture of their logo. Uh, some feedback I've got would be, let's take a picture of them in the booth. Or, you know, you have to set the rules, but this is really cool because we got a chance to set it and learn. But I think that it really, like, uh, helps people get to that person and so they don't feel like they're just kind of, like, being walked past. Um, and then just another example about like brainstorming and this, the reward, reward setup, Kenny put together sort of a quick mock-up. It was like session D, workshop A. You know, it's going to be fun to collaborate. <laughs> and uh, then we wanted things like share something you learned. Uh, you know, teaching in the internet means that we have to do tomorrow skills today. So we mocked all of these things up. We mocked up how the points worked. And that became the template for the objectives that also Kenny generated. <laughs> so, so again, that design element goes all over the place. And then in the end, here was the big mosaic that was sketched out, sort of like, how is the mosaic supposed to work? How do we show things? And then that, that sort of tells the story of it. And again, we didn't have to build the online mosaic until we really went through many iterations and all kinds of conversations and madness. But th there was an image that would help say, OK, this has got to be at least the frame of what's going to be there. And it all starts at that storyboard level. And again, what I was trying to do in this is that we do all that. The goal is to find the game and, again, encourage collaboration. That was so after going through the storyboard, if the storyboard wasn't encouraging collaboration, we would be in trouble. <laughs> so it's in the storyboard, it goes into the game. And here's the other cool part, testing. <laughs> testing the game was something that, that I think we had pre-builds that were in the store, that were in test flight, and piloting the game, getting people to, to, to play it, 
and then try to find out, is there something fun there? You know, if you don't play it, you make a guess that something's going to be fun. And when we started playing it, people were taking pictures of their workplaces. I was taking pictures of our, our pixel walls, um, taking pictures of their friends and family, uh, using the cutouts like the bees. And uh, we have a like, sort of crazy daily Targum headline of like driving to a meeting with our group. But when you unpack all the stories that are actually in the images, it starts to have a little bit more meaning. And I was really excited when I was like seeing that. I was like, oh, hold it. And that, that, it's starting to tell a story. You can investigate somebody. So this, this sort of was something really fun, was being able to look back on it. So in our case, we did the Twitter interaction. And the Twitter interaction actually is a way of saving the photos uh, kind of in posterity or after, like, because we, we, we blew away all the testing data. So essentially, there's no, this test was a one of a kind, uh, but if we had it out in the Twitter space, you, you could actually go and find some of the photos. So there's still kind of an interesting adventure and a little bit of a log of our testing experience. But again, testing the game is critical. Another part of the game people might not have seen at all is the moderation. Um, the idea was that we're going to get a lot of pictures, and we said objectives this, take a picture with that, take a picture with somebody's logo, <laughs> take a picture with X, Y, and Z, and it was like a classification game where you were like trying to, you select it, and then you find the thing that matches. And so in this case, we actually had the moderation dashboard. and says, okay, where are the moderated pictures? Uh, let's review the uh, objectives, assign random points, <laughs> uh, review admin. You know, it basically had a set of features that our moderators had access to. And, and Kenny was actually able to add the additional challenges throughout the day. So if we found something that people would like to do or would be really fun, we could actually add them dynamically to the system. Then over here on this little screen, is a bunch of checkboxes of like the incoming stream that everybody was doing, imp uh, doing approvals for. So this actually behind the scenes was like one of those critical tools to make the day successful. Uh, because uh, we didn't have like a neural network classifying everything and answering the questions about is, th is this the right thing or the wrong thing, right? How do you do that? We had people power. <laughs> and, uh, and over here, <laughs> sort of the genius who worked all of this out and again, this is our teams all work together. It was so fun in that sense. Like we actually did that. And uh, this is this is something <laughs> is the deploying the game challenge. This is kind of where all of us are on the tightrope, and you have the story. So. Oh sure. <laughs> <laughs> Am I up next? Yeah, yeah. We'll right. we'll kind of go back and forth a little bit sure. here, but you are next. How many of you saw Jim's speech this morning for the keynote? Were you all there? Yeah. And you saw that slide he had up there about. Um, Gen Y and millennials are much more mobile-based. Um, but guess what most of us are not probably, because most of us are not Gen Y or millennials. Most of us are not generally mobile-based. Um, we come in, we work on our desktops, we work on our laptops. Everything is basically through that platform. Um, and to be an IT person, and my two colleagues, both also in IT, can attest to this, part of the challenge in this landscape is trying to figure out what we need to do five years from now. So what's happening is a lot of our students are coming in um, they're not using a desktop or a laptop to really get to us and find this. They're using their phones. I actually worked with partners um, in off-campus programs, and we have students who actually write entire papers on their cell phone, which to me is madness. <laughs> I would never be able to do that. Just the thumb motion alone is like, you know, out, off, the, off the wall. But what's happening is I think higher ed um, is a lagging a little bit in terms of engaging that audience. I really believe that. Right now, this is um, in the main university store, and there's about maybe five apps total in that store published across all of Rutgers. So we're really like a pioneer in this space right now. So I began thinking about this a lot more over the last couple of years, about how do we engage this, this specific um, need that's going to be growing a lot coming into the future. So I worked at my PM, my lead area um, manager over here, he's my app dev stuff, Adrian. Adrian, think about. Um, <laughs> yes, Adrian. What we've been doing over the last two years is try, as, as we have staff turnover, trying to find new people, basically working with them to kind of get these skill sets put into the cars, into the job descriptions, so that when this actually became a need, and literally, if we had not done that initially <clears throat> over the last year, when this project hit the radar, um, we would have had to basically either have found a vendor to come in and help us. We couldn't have been able to do this on our own. So to their great leadership, um, we've actually managed to create this. And honestly, going through the entire process over, 
Um, to Rick's point about the way that we all work together, I have a colleague of mine who's one of the sayings is it takes a village. And it really actually does. When you download that game on your phone, it's not one guy hanging out in a room. Even though you might think it is, it's not. It's a development studio with a staff of 150 people all churning out that product. We did this effectively um, with an internal staff of about five on the IT side. Rick and Kenny and Rika, he had three. Uh, Chris was really the main stakeholder for TLT. And actually, Josh in the back there did a lot of the graphic design with us. So it, that's how we kind of plugged it together and pulled everything. You know, not for the good talents of like Rick with the storyboarding, Chris with the vision, Adrian overseeing it, and doing the mosaic. Without the team working on this as a collaborative effort, it never would have really gotten achieved. We're using technologies like Firebase, which six months ago, I had no idea what it was <laughs> or what it was. <laughs> and I still really don't. I leave that to Adrian. Um, and what happened was, as we were getting closer, and I, I, you know, a part of my job is going to the meetings, being the morale leader of the group, trying to inspire people. And believe me, there are points where he comes to me and I don't know even what to respond, except to say, we're going to get through it. And we do. And it's very interesting. You know, you build a good team, you get a good result. And that's what I always felt is the case. So like to Rick's statement, um, we literally, Friday night, I sent out the SOS to this group that we had not gotten approval into the store yet. The app was done, but our last hindrance was that store. Because there's really no one at Rutgers who's really gone through this who can work with us to really champion this. Rutgers has an OIT person, but that person has their own responsibilities, they don't report to me, so it's really like you know, laying out the landscape to make that all work. Um, so that being said, you know, actually, can I get my slide? You mm -hmm. can advance me one, one, one pop? So yeah, so the Generation Z, Millennials versus traditional engagement, <laughs> um, getting skills aligned with what actually you're seeing down the road. You know, don't be afraid to be afraid of the future, because the future could have changed. It's just what you do now to respond to that, to be a little bit ready or a little bit more ready when that time comes. Because the fact is, in another 10 years, I have no idea what the next big thing's going to be. But I do know that when it comes, we'll figure it out. Um, and then really, I've always, and I think most of you in the room I've worked with, not everybody, but like the Hushy the Walkers people, you know, I really see IT as a partner. You know, this is effectively a grid product that IT's partnership with grid helped to produce. From my perspective, it's no different than a website. You know, you know, website built, you come to us, we help you create that. So really, from my perspective, IT should be in the, in the room as a partner and, 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 a, and a colleague to create systems. <clears throat> so, um, anything else you want to cover? I mean, what else do we want to discuss? Um, Rick has more stuff. Yeah, yeah, I have a couple more things. Okay. And back to Rick. But, which is actually the, how's it going so far? We've, we've, we've talked about how much we love it and how much work we put in. But of course, uh, people have been playing all day long. You guys all came to this room. So uh, this is the audience poll. How's it going? What, what kinds of things would you? And then, of course, my, my next story, slide is the plans for the future. So well, we can cover I, these both at once. Can I piggyback off of this question? <laughs> so I asked, who was playing the game? I actually know some of the folks because I recruited, I recruited the top leaderboard leaders. Um, to basically come because we weren't, we weren't expecting anyone to actually show up to this to the oh, presentation. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but no, but you, yeah, but, so when we saw you guys filing in, that's really, really encouraging. But if you weren't using the game, so we're just curious what we could have done possibly in regards to marketing. Um, could we have announced it better? Should we have given you more notice? What were some of the things that we could have done to get you guys more engaged in actually using the app? Mm -hmm. Or if the two top leaders could actually say why they were using the app? Um, other than I want Amazon products, and that's totally that's cool, cool too. To say that, no, no. yeah, but that's cool too, right? So you know, what, okay. what's, what, what's that feedback? Well, somebody gave me the, the slip and said, "I said, well, where uh, can you find the app? <laughs> find that for me." Okay. Ah, so and you took advantage. Really, it was just interesting when I started it. It just seemed interesting. Okay. Oh wow. Was that after a certain number of pictures, it did not allow me to put any others in there. Oh, no, that's, more, yeah, that's probably version one bug. Yeah. Or version oh, one. Or version okay. point nine yesterday. So literally, something. So, so, point nine yesterday. So, yeah, so we pushed out Saturday. So I know for sure we have two leaders, Nathan B. Which was the other part was no one knew who each other were, and we were all trying yeah, to do that. Random. It was actually our game trying to figure so out who two, you guys were. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Nathan, what's your feedback on the game? <laughs> I mean, I partly was playing incredible in the uh, Echo Show, which I think I got beat out of. <laughs> but um, but I, mean, I thought it was a lot of fun. It, was, it added like an interactive element to the whole thing. Um, the, the app I thought worked really well. There's one particular one that for some reason never got approved. I don't know if I didn't 
right thing in the photo or something, but yeah. um, it's like still yellow or whatever, or orange in the, in the app. Mm -hmm. um, Someone recalculate the points. <laughs> <laughs> to your really point though, Nathan. It, it's not going to, it's not going to. Yeah, yeah. Nathan, to um, your point though, what's happening in the process we built, is that when you submit that photo, it goes to an actual like website, and we have moderators check it to make sure the objective is matching, and also the screen for like offensive or like issue content. Oh. So whatever you did, it might not have been the objective quite exactly right. So that actually might have been why it was delayed. Mm -hmm. So yeah. one other thing I pointed out to our staff. So you guys noticed the folks with capes, right? So the capes were basically that generation who would be using this. So I mentioned how there was low usage. We relied on them to obviously fill. You know, kind of like seat fillers at the Oscars. Um, but again, they, it's easy for them to go ahead and do this. So the pep talk I had to give those folks is basically, <coughs> when you attend the conference, remember, most of these folks are students. They've never attended the conference before. The population who is attending this conference are people like me. You're like I kept hitting the, uh, the selfie button when I was trying to actually trigger a figure. That's me. I'm the lowest <laughs> tech, tech person you'll ever meet, I swear to God. Right? Um, but those are the types, you know, that's the population demographic that we're dealing with. So, Marketing it, I think, is the next step for us to actually conquer or at least discover because what we did technically is fabulous. Again, the amount of time, the effort, the type of physical nerd code mm -hmm. that it took for us to build it is one thing. But then again, think about all the apps that you guys download. Who is actually downloading it and why? Right. And that, that's what we have to figure <laughs> out in version 2.0 or 2.0 yeah. or whatever. So just one observation I ran into is that it would actually be really neat to have parallel games, a vendor game, so the vendors are sitting there all day long, can get something out of it, and then also like our assistants and the people facilitating, they actually facilitated a lot of photos, and they just jumped right in. But we didn't score any of our internal people. They basically could participate but not get a score. So the attendees were getting the scores and going for that. But if we kind of had a, a game on the back end, we could encourage different kinds of activities and objectives for our own staff. So the, uh, this moves to just plans for the future. So, question Rex, yeah. did you have a question? <laughs> no, I was just going to say I want to point for perseverance because I asked three people to help me find the app on my phone. We couldn't even find the app store. So I went through the three of <laughs> <laughs> Jessica finally, with her really big cape, got done, and I took four pictures in this class. So, okay. oh, there you go. Awesome. awesome. Yay. Yay. So, so I have just a exactly <laughs> yeah right exactly. So I have just sort of four four questions. I know also we actually are knocking out the time too. So um, so there's the what would you all like to see type question things that you might want to see in a future version. Uh, and then there's also the famous question of would you guys use it next year? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and then. Um, the, there's a, another element about this, which is that since this is the RU Online Conference game, uh, it's possible to maintain it to be a, something that leads into next year's event. So if you have it on your phone, possible futures, these aren't nothing guaranteed, but can be things like, oh, uh, paper submissions coming up, the new conference dates are coming up, things like that can actually be integrated into the application. So that you sort of get a pre-conference guide in and then a sort of a post-conference thank you, right? That's not yet in the system, but that's uh, something I've been thinking about a lot because, again, we put a lot of work in for a single day, but conferences are actually like beginning, middle, and end, <laughs> and you can't skip that. So uh, that's an area I've thought about. Um, yeah. Should we do our TLT pitch? TLT pitch? Okay. Pitch, pitch, pitch. So, <laughs> so Rick is Director of Game Research and Immersive Design. Obviously, this one app is just one small component of what he does. The joke between all of us is that this is our side job, and then the conference is another <laughs> side job, so we don't do this every day. But Rick's actual charge, though, is basically working with instructors throughout Rutgers to see how they could actually put games inside of their curriculum. So whether mm -hmm. it's um, paper-based games or online-based games such as this. These are things that other universities are doing, and I, you know, we believe Rutgers should be right there. Admittedly, we're yeah. not. So, you know, Rick has a big initiative when it comes to virtual reality. So if you, if you visited the grid yeah. of the makerspace yeah. table in the back of the exhibit hall, if you saw the VR goggles, there are institutions that are using VR goggles for basically you know, science and technology curriculum, whether it's training for um, engineering or training for medical reasons. Mm -hmm. Those are things that Rutgers should be doing. This school has 
talented, vast resources, right? It's statewide. I mean, we were one of those few institutions that have um, a diverse population. We're in the Northeast. We're part of the Big mm -hmm. Ten. Our, our peers to the Midwest, no offense to the Midwest if you're in the Midwest, but we are centrally located in, in hot spots of technology. But I think as far as technology curriculum, those are things that we could do a lot better. So Rick is yep. working with instructors to make sure, not make sure, but to assist yeah. ways of how faculty members can come up with a vision. So like Rick said, we needed a vision for the game. and You just all just sat around a room and thought something up. Those are all things that our faculty members are doing. The big issue mm -hmm. though is that faculty members are not necessarily getting buy-in from either their, um, their colleagues or their professors or their deans or their assistant deans. And those are things that we are trying to encourage through conferences like this. So um, obviously you guys are in this space. So if there's anything you guys would um, need from our team. Obviously, Rick, Warren, and yep. I could speak with you guys yeah. and help you guys out. So anyway, we've been a really good team, and it's been a good experience. But keep in mind, we've all known each other for like 18 years. Or uh, well, yeah, yeah, there's years, the secret, so. secret history. That's yeah. part of the secret, too. Yeah, but, uh, but my goal is to help people find the game, right? So if it's in the classroom, if it's in online, if it's in VR, if we can find the game, we can figure out what the motivation is and we can build it out. So we, we, we do these hybrid type activities. They've got the maker space where we're actually building physical devices for it. And so that's where we have multiplayer pixel walls. We're gonna have some autonomous and like robotic type projects. There's a lot of collaborative interaction in many different ways that can be used in your classroom. Or not just the classroom, the online environment. Uh, 360 video has basically uh, it's like $250 for a 360 camera. People can do this, faculty can do this. It's something that you can capture an experience and bring it into the room. This tech is available and what I wanna do is find the game, get it to people and work with you all. So anyway, that's my sign off, <laughs> but thanks. Yeah.